We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T, and I hope everybody's doing good today. Make sure you guys have your teacups ready. Get ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get oh, ready. Because this tea is what? Piping hot. Born down south, raised in the pump of bean. A down south representative by all means. Miami, a black man, America, dream. 305 for live and I rep the whole team. You know my city up, we don't sleep. Live on Sunday and sex on the beach. Tidally a chick, nothing move but the money. So baby, if you love me, pay souls, keep me company. New love and hip hop. 305 is where it's at. Soon as that sun coming up, yup, that top's coming down. She do the same thing with them G strings when the G come around. My pedigree's what I said it be. Gun playing. Hey you guys, I hope y'all are doing good. So a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about Love and Hip Hop Miami. So if you guys don't know, it debuted this past Monday. And yes, honey, I was in the building. I was there to watch it, and I really enjoyed it. I was really surprised at how well shot it was, the colors. They're definitely taking a whole different aspect with this show. Um, it didn't come off like dry ass, Love and Hip Hop Land. I'm so over that season. But Love and Hip Hop Miami definitely came out the box, out the woodwork. It was very, very interesting to see the different characters on there. I haven't seen Shay Johnson in years, but her ass was doing a a bit too much okay i left my broken heart back in the eight i got a new lease on life i got a new body a new man all in miami and you ain't got a boy after my breakup with scrappy i was depressed sad and lonely but my dude came around and he helped me out of that slump but being in a long distance relationship for the past two years has been tough to you. so now I'm making a permanent move to Miami to be with my boo. Oh, no, no, no. What's up, everybody? I'm Pleasure Pete. I'm a four-time Grammy-nominated artist, and I'm a former member of the group Pretty Ricky. Pretty Ricky was about sex, sex, and more sex. Baby making, love making, falling in love. The ladies loved it, and the fellas loved it even more. The group broke up for several reasons. We just wasn't getting along, too much success, a lot of egos all over the place, so I And it was really funny to see Pretty Ricky, AKA Thicky Ricky, because them boys, they done gained some damn weight, okay? Um, yeah, Pleasure P, yeah, you done packed on the pounds, bruh. Him and the other little short guy that kept arguing. I'm like, wow, like, what happened? You know what I'm saying? Yo, you didn't have to stand in the yo. Get done what you mean? Who recorded? Who engineered? Who mixed? All right, the did you, you say? <laughs> Me, I did it. Don't you got a number one record that I produced? I, I, I bring one. Cause I put I work, just, cause I I just work with you, bro. Listen, listen, be real. You wanted to do it, so you were like, it, I'm going to take it. I'm going to run with it. We didn't have to do it that way. So now we're going to do it the right way. Make sure everybody pulling their weight. Slick going to do what he got to do. P, you, me, everybody going to pull their weight. This about one last album, one last tour. Making our Agreed. Correcting our mistakes Agreed. from the past. Agree. And freaking. Agree. Doing it for the pen. But I'm glad that they decide to get back together and that they're deciding to become a group again. But I don't think I can ever forget. Every time I look at Spectacular, honey, I just crack up. I don't think I'll ever forget when Spectacular from Pretty Ricky went viral for challenging Chris Brown to a dance contest and he had on them itty bitty ass red draws. Please don't tell me y'all forgot. This is Spectacular, honey. <laughs> That shit had me dying. But anyways, he's doing his thing. He's now a millionaire, so he doesn't even have to do this whole Pretty Ricky thing. He's invested in his own company, and Spectacular has been doing very spectacular over the past few years. But it's very good to see these guys again. They've definitely hit a lot of rough patches, but it seems like they're trying to be positive and come back together. And Shay Johnson is not here for the reunion, honey. She was like, fuck that. Y'all use my man. You're just using what he has, you know, to get back on. You know, she was just doing way too much. I'm gonna need her to bring it down a notch, okay? She all right. She let it in. Of course I'm all right. I'm your girl. What you doing here? I'm here to support my man. That's what I'm here doing. That's what they talk about, man. Yeah, supporting my man. I see this group back together. It wasn't so good not too long ago. Ooh. Bro, 
bro, where you found that hoe at, bro? A halfway house? <laughs> you so tired. Shut your ass Yeah, up. tired here with my man. The one that matters. The one that's going to jumpstart your career that don't exist right now. Boom. I'm not feeling the three of these guys from the way they treated my dude in the past. And now this shiny little bitch got the nerve to talk crazy and talk slick to me? Let's go, because I want to do something to all three of y'all anyway. Last time You're I heard you ain't getting no money, with raggedy ass. Bitch, bye. Get your makeup done. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. You bums are so oh, funny to me. You bum ass. <laughs> you'll be nothing without pleasure, you loser bum ass. Now, I definitely love the whole Trick and Trina um, thing. It's cool to see them on there. And I love the fact that Trick took us to the real part of Miami. People just think Miami is South Beach. Miami is so much more than South Beach. So I'm really glad that he took the audiences out of South Beach and they're not trying to make it this whole South Beach glamour situation. He took folks to where he stays. He took folks to the hood. Like I said, it was just really well shot. I love seeing the donks, honey. Oh, Miami. I had such a good time down there this summer. Uh -uh. Cause I'm a thug. That's right, you heard. That's right, you heard. Baby, cause I'm a thug all day, every day. Oh my God, please do not act like Trick Daddy did not have hits back in the day. I've seen a lot of folks online roasting him because of how he looks in 2017, but honey, for folks my age, y'all know Trick and Trina, they put on for Miami, and I feel like Miami does not get enough recognition, especially in hip hop, but Trick Daddy has a lot of good music. He has a def he definitely has a good catalog, so I'm glad to see him and Miss Trina on the show. Trina definitely has a cool catalog, and I can't wait to hear more music from them. Um, so, I mean, the host situation was just crazy just watching the show and gunplay oh my goodness i have not seen gunplay in years so it was really funny to see him on television and when that fool said that his girlfriend that he's currently with had been shot three times in a chicago drive-by i was like yep that's a match made in hell <laughs> i see why y'all are together gunplay and she done been shot shit i guess cool but you come from miami and you know what's with miami i love gunplay and i really really want to see him succeed but I'm very worried about gunplay relapsing and getting back into the streets and all the temptations that might come with it. You got groupies, you got bitches, you got all of that. I changed since I left here. But you know, you know, like... We are moving back. Kiara don't want me to move back to Miami because of my past. And, you know, a few chicks and, you know... Mm. Oh, what's up? Miami Tip oh. hung up her dancing shoes and started doing this rap thing. And she's got a lot of talent. Just give me a promise that we're going to be on our best behavior. Do you miss me? You know, that's the past, but I still think about you, you know. You still have my heart a little bit. There's, there's a spot right there, right at the tip. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's going to be interesting to see what he ends up doing this season because it seems like he has a thing for Miami tip. And it seems like he might be the scrappy of the season or the Stevie J of the season. But it's going to be really interesting to see how it just plays out. But him and Trick Daddy are a straight up mess. I'm gonna get back in the lab, get get this album done, and it'll just be an honor, my if I could really get you on the album, my brother, for real, Let me, for let real, me tell you something. Trick don't play. Ain't too many people I do music for. I'm tired of everybody from the West Coast, everybody from the East Coast, taking our vibe, yeah. taking our lives, yeah. and putting it in their music, yeah. and not giving us credit for our lyrics. Now, Trina's cousin, Bobby Lights, I think that's his name, Honey, he is a messy queen, but I'm here for it, bitch. He got the show popping Monday night. And funny enough, he looks like Trina. Like, you know, I thought he was just, you know, over-exaggerating, saying, oh, you know, me and Trina are cousins. You know, honey, in the hood, everybody's your cousin. But, no, they actually do look alike. And Trina's father and his father, they're brothers. So they are actually blood cousins. But for whatever reason, Trina is not trying to put him on. And he's not here for the foolishness, okay? When I come around you, I don't want to have to deal with them. And if I'm going to have to deal with them, they should probably have some type of understanding as to where I stand in your life. I've never done anything ill to you, Trina. You I've never, I've never done, but... I've always had your back. I'm all that for you. Uh -huh. But I feel like I deserve the same in return from you. Like, this is my mother family. Y'all should mother treat him with respect. Can I say something? Yes. My crew is trained to be around to act accordingly. And when you come around acting your way, it kind of conflicts. I am family. I don't need to be trained. I need to be respected. I'm not one of your mother minions, and I'm not trainable. So we'll continue to do what the f we do. You get your money, you're a superstar. I'm about to be a superstar, too. I got my music about to pop off. And even if you don't decide to help me or support me, it's still going to get done. Okay. Bobby, you are our mother bomb. You're beneath me, bitch, and you will always be. Ain't no way in hell 
I'm gonna sit right here and let Trina scum ass minion disrespect me and call me out my name. <laughs> that ain't the way it's going down. I take enough to these streets with just being who I am. Weirdo. All I've ever wanted from Trina was to accept me as an artist and as her blood. So the season seems like it's gonna be off the hook. I forgot the other female cast members, they weren't really memorable to me, but the breakout star of the show, the one person that people cannot forget is Amara La Negra. <laughs> <laughs> trying to say it in my Spanish accent, Amara La Negra. Yo, I loved her. I loved everything about her. I loved her spirit. I loved her attitude. I loved her body. I loved that big ass afro. I loved her brown skin. <laughs> Like, I just thought it was dope. I've never heard of this dude, Young Hollywood, and them damn eyelid tattoos. I don't, that's, no, stop. You're not Lil Wayne. That shit's tacky. But he just got on my damn nerves. And he was officially the first person drug in 2018. When I tell you black Twitter came for his ass, for him saying all those colorist statements, and, you know, just trying to belittle Amara La Negra for her trying to be comfortable, you know, her being comfortable in her skin. And he's making comments like, you know, why are you calling yourself Afro-Latina? Is it because you're African? Is it because you wear the Afro? And, you know, uh, and then when he called her Nutella and, you know, just being just really crazy. And then he put up the black power fist. Honey, y'all go ahead and check out these videos. I, I couldn't even believe what I was watching on television. Check this out. I think we were actually to take off some and do a record, right? And I'm like, yo, I need you to look a certain way. What would a certain way look like? Like, what? What do you have in mind? What do you a do? little bit more Beyonce, a little less Macy Gray. You know, you gotta be a little bit more it. sensual. You know, the Afro is cool. You know, you can do, you know, say like a video here and there, a certain look, but you know, maybe try something different, different looks. So wait, I don't get it. What does that it's mean? It's a seasonal Elaborate. thing. It's Elaborate. a seasonal no, 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 thing. No, 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 no. See, I like this. Go ahead. What does that mean? <laughs> You can see Beyonce just like this, Soul Sister, the same way you can see her come in a beautiful gown, elegant, breathtaking. So I can't be elegant if I have a fro? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess so. Who the f said that you can't be elegant with the fro? What does that mean? You're not a stylist? A lot of people like to box me in, oh, because of my look or because I'm dark-skinned, but that doesn't make me less Latina. I'm 100%. Being an Afro-Latina, I think I, I embrace it. Afro-Latina, elaborate. Yeah. Are you African or is that just because you have an Afro? Just because you had to notice I am black. I'm just trying to get to know you, you know what I'm saying? Like what made this whole, you know, Amara, black and proud, Afro thing. At the end of the day, in the music industry, they're looking for cookie cutter poster childs. Not all Latinas look like J Lo or Sofia Vergara or Shakira. So, where are the women that look like myself? <laughs> You're just so intense about this whole African thing. I'm extremely proud of my brown skin. I'm proud of my color, of the way that my hair curls. I'm proud of who I am, and nobody's gonna take that away from me. Not even Hollywood with little slick, stupid ass comments. You must do good music, huh? Mine. I hope that you do. <laughs> For real, like, I feel like you feel some type of way towards me. Because I. All right, I mean, dude seriously called her the Nutella Queen. You know what I'm saying? He's really a jerk, but again, like I've told y'all time and time again on this channel, colonialism slavery, the European standard of beauty, did a number on all of us, on all people of color. You know what I'm saying? Not just in the African-American community, not just in Africa, because like I told you, you know, I have so many people in my family who bleach their skin because we're been told that lighter skin is better. Um, you know, in India, in Asia, like people just have this affinity for lighter skin, for the European standard of beauty. So when you have somebody like uh, Amara La Negra who's dark skin, who's beautiful, who's proud, who's not ashamed of her, of her hair and her features, Sometimes that's off-putting to people because, again, when you're dark-skinned and you look a certain way, you're supposed to be walking around this bitch with your head held down and being ashamed of your brown skin and wishing you were light and look like a Beyonce or Rihanna, and that's not her attitude. Her attitude is like, yes, I'm dark, you know what I'm saying, but I'm a proud Afro-Latina. 
You know, I'm Dominican just like the next person. You know, I'm glad that she's there to be that visual aspect. And I know a lot of people are like, you know, Hollywood needs to be removed. And people are going to um, Mona Scott's page and going off on her and saying that he should be removed off of the show. I don't think he should be removed at all. I think you need a character like him because that's the real world. Because, again, you guys sit up here all the time on social media and act like colorism doesn't exist. And, like, it's just something that, you know, bitter, dark-skinned black girls made up, you know, is something that dark skin chicks just can't get over colorism is very real and it doesn't just affect black people it affects darker toned people throughout the world you know so I'm glad that they showed this because that's how a lot of people think and I already said that when I did my Cardi B video that unfortunately a lot of people especially in the Dominican community they have been brainwashed to think that lighter is better does everyone in the Dominican community think like that no of course not but a majority of people do and young Hollywood is no exception so I cannot be too angry at him because somebody taught him that and unfortunately we suffer from that also in the African community in other communities where we're taught the same thing that lighter is better you know what I'm saying you know how many black people sit and make fun of other black people's hair and their hair texture I remember when I first went natural I talked about this years ago when I would wear my afro out people always hit me up with the black power fist and it's like what the hell is that about it's just my hair I'm not a black panther you know what I'm saying so I mean it's just it's really sad but colorism is a real problem and people should not be burying their head under the sand or under a rock and pretending as if it doesn't exist so to remove him would be disingenuous you know what I'm saying especially being that most of the colorism tends to come from men you know a lot of guys tend to perpetuate that even if they don't realize that they do so I think it's good that they're showing this I'm so happy that she's a proud dark-skinned woman and this is why we need people like Amara La Negra because so many times we're being told that you know black it's just black. You know, as long as you have a drop in you, you're black. Okay, that's fine. But when you're only going to show lighter skin and racially ambiguous people and pass them off as black, and then when you see somebody like her, that's why people get so shocked. Because the only people that you usually see coming out of Latin America are the J-Lo's, the Ricky Martins. You know, a lot of people don't realize that in Latin America, it's diverse just like it is in, in, in America. You know what I'm saying? You have a wide range of colors. You have a wide range of mixtures. That's why I feel, in my personal opinion, you don't have to agree. It makes me no difference. Y'all are not going to change my mind. But that's why I feel like it's disingenuous to just paint everyone as black. You know what I'm saying? When you have people who have other admixtures in them. Because when they see an Amara La Negra, it shocks them. You know, so I'm glad that she's breaking that stereotype. I'm glad that she's showing the world that, you know what, I'm an Afro-Latina. We do exist. You know, we're not the phantom unicorns of the Latin community. There's a lot of black people in Latin America, a lot of dark-skinned people, but they don't get any type of shine because a lot of Latin American countries, they prefer to perpetuate colorism and they prefer for lighter-skinned people to be on their televisions. Like if you watch Telenova and things like that, most of the actresses are all, you know, um, Spaniard-looking Latinos. They don't use as many dark-skinned Latinos. So I'm glad that she's breaking the mold. It's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. But I also don't want the entire season to be based on just colorism, okay? I can deal with it the first maybe two to three episodes. But if the entire season is just, oh, whoa, it's me. I'm a dark-skinned chick. I'm a tune out because I, I don't have time for that because we, we can't sit around and wallow in self-pity, okay? We cannot. Let's address it. Let's keep it real, but we're not going to wallow in it. And we also need to learn to appreciate each other. What I hate about these conversations is that people also use it as a way to knock other women. You know, just because you find Amara La Negra beautiful and, you know, she's brown skin like you does not take away from Beyonce's beauty. And I've been seeing people saying, good, you know, she needs to replace Beyonce. I hate Beyonce. You know, she's ugly. She's overrated. Beyonce is far from ugly. Beyonce is gorgeous. I don't care what anybody says. Rihanna is gorgeous. I think we need to be able to embrace everybody. And Cardi B herself is also a beautiful woman. And that's why I said, even in my video, when I, you know, broke that down, I said at the end, I still fucks with Cardi B because we were all raised a certain way and we all still hold a little bit of our childhoods within us and those prejudices and those insecurities it's within us and it and it, it takes us a while to exercise that out it takes us a while to become comfortable with our skin you know but unfortunately you have people who are raised in colorist households and sometimes that's just you know what was embedded in them even young Hollywood for me I'm not going to go on his social media and drag him and wish him death 
I feel bad for him. And I hope that once he sees himself on camera and he sees how foolish he looks, that that will force him to change. You know what I'm saying? That he will see dark-skinned women as any other type of women. You know what I'm saying? We're just like any other woman. So, you know, hopefully that will get him to change. He was on Snapchat yesterday. You know, folks were going in on him. I want y'all to watch this video really quick. Why you call her Nutella? I like Nutella. Do you going to act like you don't like Nutella? <laughs> the Nutella Queen. <laughs> I can't believe they put that. Out of everything I said, they left that. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, so you guys just saw his Snapchat video. So like I said, hopefully, okay, hopefully, he will eventually change once he sees how foolish he's looking on television. But I think, you know, so far, so good. You know, I'm liking this show. I'm liking what I see so far. I'm sure there'll be some ratchetness. I'm sure there'll be some fights because that's what love and hip hop is. I'm sure there'll be a lot of damn sex and all types of shit. But, um... I think, you know, they, they needed to revamp the franchise because I'm literally over all of these cities at this point, but especially Atlanta. I'm super over Atlanta. So I'm glad that they went to Miami. And I think they have a really decent cast. So it's going to be very interesting, you know, to watch Trick Daddy and see what he comes up with. Trick Daddy, please, sir, I beg of you, sir, if you're watching, take off that bright-ass jacket and that confessional. That jacket, honey. I said, where the hell did Trick get this damn loud-ass jacket from? I wasn't feeling the damn jacket. But other than that, you know, trick is trick. And, um, you know, it just seems like he's in a happier space right now when he's just trying to make moves and him and Trina are trying to come back. And so it's just going to be interesting to watch. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button. And make sure you click that bell so you can be down with the notification squad, honey. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. Hey you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.